Hey, I'm Chase, and this is All Things Running. Today, we're going underwater with this in-depth review. Now, all puns aside, we're going back to the roots of all things random and not just a watch review channel, but also an electronics and consumer goods channel. Now, what I have here is the world's most affordable and smallest compact carrying drone. Today, we're looking at the Chasing Dory. Now, let's flip the camera around and dive deep into this review. Okay, now here's what we're looking at today. This is the Chasing Dory underwater drone. Now, the company who made this is called Chasing Underwater Drones. This is called the Dory. They do make other ones like the Mini Gladius. And this is the basically the cheapest underwater drone a person can get on Amazon. This is $4.99. I paid for half as a part of my birthday gift. My mother paid for the other half. And let's just sort of dive into at least what it says on the outside. Now, it does say it's travel size, and it is. I'll show you in just a minute. It does say it has a 45-degree adjustable tilt lock, so you can basically go like this, look up and down 45 degrees. One-hour runtime, 1080p camera system, customized visual effects, GPS buoy, 49 feet down, waterproof, and you can share it instantly on social media. So let's open this up and kind of see what you get inside. Now, when it comes to underwater drones and it comes to things that you can travel with, you can see that, well, the box seems kind of large. However, the drone itself is actually pretty small. This is the carrying case for the drone itself. Let's just move this sort of off to the side. Now, the drone is extremely small compared to some other underwater drones. You can see right here, this is it. This is the Chasing Dory underwater drone. Has a couple LED lights that I guess have 250 lumen, which is actually really good underwater. The 1080p camera right there. And it does have five different thrusters. Three that adjust its ascent and descent rate. It also has a sort of stabilization in the water. So you don't have to worry about it moving up, moving down. It automatically locks into place. And then it has two thrusters right here that has both imports along the side you know if you look at this it it's extremely compact and i actually can't wait to use this now underwater drones do use a tether system and they do that because once you get underneath the water in fact some of the waterproof earbuds i've done in the past the moment you get underwater water is so viscous it's so solid and signal blocking that without a tether there's no way you can control this under the water for any actual sort of distance. So it does come with a tether. Let's see what else is inside the box. Now you lift this up and inside you have multiple different things. You have the buoy right here. Now the one thing that I really like about this system is it does only go 15 meters down. 49 feet is what they say, 15 meter tether now the difference is is a lot of things a lot of drones have a home base which means that you have to put this on the actual ground or on a boat or some something to float it to keep it dry then the tether comes off of that well this itself is a buoy that floats this is a wi-fi signal that goes to your phone where you can control and view the camera system from and then you have 15 additional meters from the buoy to your actual phone. So that's what I actually really like about this is that I think it gives you a little more range. Yes, it only goes 50 feet underwater. Most things, any diver, any scuba diver will tell you the most, most of the things that you see are within 60 to 40 feet. So this is sort of right in the sweet spot of 50 feet. We're gonna, we're gonna test it out today. So it comes with a buoy. It comes with the 15 meter or 49 feet of tether. It has a charger. It has a bunch of different O-rings. You got to check the O-rings and stuff when it comes to the uh, tether and everything else because you don't want any water to intrude in your electronics. It also, the charger also comes with basically every single, you know, charging plug for your country so you can get this no, mat no matter where you are in the world. Now let's move this out of the way and connect everything together. 
Okay, now that I have a lot of things separated from the table here, we're, we're gonna go ahead and connect everything together so I can show you just how easy it is to set up. Then we're gonna dive into the application or the app portion that you download on your phone and then connect your phone to the drone itself. So the way this works is you have a two, now I've never done this before. This is the first time I'm doing it on camera right now. I've read the directions. They say this thing is supposed to be so easy that you could, yeah, I should be able to do it right here with no problem. So basically you have a two tether system. Now it doesn't say which one goes to which and they both look like they're the exact same. Now there is supposed to be a, now there are um, O-rings right here already attached. I assume that they're good to go since it's a brand new system. Go ahead and hook it in, thread it on and it threads on relatively easy. Like anything else, you don't need to over tighten this. I would say hand tight, maybe slightly past hand tight, but these are plastic. So my recommendation is if you over tighten them, you're gonna break them, don't do it. Then the next one goes into the drone itself, right in the back. And it automatically turns on once it's plugged into the buoy. That is the on and off switch. Okay, so green light says it's on, it's ready to pair. Let's dive into the application and get this thing set up. Setting this thing up. Now again, I unhooked it. I'm going to plug it in. Again, this is gonna turn on the drone itself. Make sure again, it's a little more than hand tight. Now this works off of Wi-Fi. So what you need to do is go in your phone and underneath the Wi-Fi setting, you're looking for the Dory right there. Boom, Dory. Password, super easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know, super complicated. Boom, immediately hooked in. Now I'm gonna go to the Chasing Dory app, which is free, it's right here. Press start, boom, it says connected right here. Press start. And right there, you can see, you can see right here that it's working. Got some backpacks right there, got my cool wheel. You can see right here, super easy. So here are the toggles. I'm not gonna turn it on, it's not in water. I could power it on, I'm not. Low, high, right there is the power on. You got the lights, boom. Got the lights off over here, E camera, video. It's that easy to hook in. Now all you do is toss this thing in the water and you're ready to go. Let's actually get out to the lake. Okay, so at the ice lake, I used an auger to kind of break up the ice, which was two feet deep, took forever. Then I went into my phone, like I showed you before, went into the Wi-Fi settings and then set up the dory. Now, again, it just popped right up. You click on it, it automatically connects, and then you go into the app and you're good to go. Now, once in the app, it's extremely straightforward from there. You simply hit connect and then you press the start button and then it turns on. Now, you can see that because it uses a Wi-Fi setting, the Wi-Fi setting is slightly glitchy. Um, and I noticed that when you go from bright to dark to bright, there is this sort of green sort of screen that pops up as it's adjusting. Now, this is not how it looks the entire time. And I'm gonna switch between the app here to show you the controls and the actual video that you download to your phone. Now keep an eye out on the screen because once all the little screen indicators disappear, that's me switching into the actual recorded mode into the Chasing Dory. Now, this thing was not difficult to use. 
it is extremely easy and it is extremely functional. However, it was sort of bright outside and I didn't have any sort of covering over the phone. So it was hard for me to see the screen and understand exactly what was going on. So a lot of what I'm doing here is I'm sort of underneath the ice and I'm playing with the controls and it has a depth sensor up in the corner that tells you minus this, minus that. Now I think that if I had cut a larger hole, then I would have been able to sort of mess with it as opposed to just shoving it down into the smallest hole I could cut because it took so long to do. Now you can see that I'm able to angle it downward, I'm able to sort of look around, and then I'm sort of, again, I'm floating around here under the lake because it's super hard for me to see. I think it's sort of cool that I'm able to drive around. I think the clarity on the screen, the 1080p, is actually very good. And maybe I didn't choose the best lake to try this in because, again, this is just a local frozen lake that was sort of just down the street. Alaska has over 2 million lakes. This is not the clearest lake in the world. However, I think that if that was in something like an ice tent, you would have been able to sort of get a better understanding because I would have been able to see it better on the app. Now here I am controlling it. The This is the ascent and descent and that is on the right hand side. On the left hand side is gonna be the forward, back, and left and right. Now these are simply used by just touching the screen. So anywhere on the right hand side you touch, it automatically populates the joystick anywhere on the left hand side it automatically adjusts there too now if you look over on the right hand side you can see it has a little level spaceship in the blue that is your angle up and angle down where you can angle up to 45 degrees up or down i use that later to look up at the ice and then to look sort of down at the bottom now again i think if i was an ice tent and i think that if i could see the screen better and I had more of an understanding of how this worked that I'd be cruising along the bottom of the lake. I plan to go back out next week, maybe the week after, maybe both, maybe find a different lake and do different testing. So keep a lookout for that video in the future. Now, one of the things that I really thought was cool is I scuba dive and I've never scuba dived underneath ice before. And this sort of gives you an idea or an understanding of what it looks like underneath the ice and i think it's just really cool i didn't see any fish at all but one of the things that i really thought was cool was that i started to track myself back to the location to you know sort of get myself out of using the cord and honestly i think that if it wasn't a bright overcast so the sun was out it was cloudy, so it was like that really bright over the snow sort of look. I think that if it was clear skies, the sun was directly hitting the lake surface, which again was covered in two feet of ice and snow. I think, and I, and I had an ice tent, I think that it would have been absolutely clear underneath the water. You would have been able to see far better. You can see right here that when the lake starts to freeze, that it's clear up until the top. I think it's cool to get these sort of angles. You know, honestly, I'm excited about this drone. I'm excited to try it in the ocean. I'm excited to try it in other lakes. In fact, you know, I'm going to sort of plan a little bit better, not just use a standard ice auger for cutting holes in the ice, then trying to use an ax to cut through that. I mean, two feet was sort of a lot, but I know as things start to melt, the ice will start to shift and break up. And then I can do a lot more of these reviews to really test out how this thing works under the water. All in all, I was extremely happy. Now, as I'm starting to pan up here at the 45 degree angle, you can see my son using a shovel to cut through the third hole that we had made just because, you know, he was getting bored with me driving under the water. Again, you see the cord right there. It is 15 meters in length. 50 feet is what they say, 49 feet. And we barely used any of it on this. And here's just a quick overview from the top of me trying to pull it out of the ice. You see that it was a pretty tight fit. The diameter of the auger was a little small. Maybe next time I'll use a chainsaw, open up a huge area. I just don't want to cause a danger area. Now, all in all, a really cool product. I cannot wait to take this thing out into the ocean. I cannot wait to get into a deeper lake.
Now, if you like videos and videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below and leave a comment of the content you guys would like to see next. There are so many videos coming up in the future. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop the next video. Until next time.